What's going on, y'all? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> Girl, what's going on, y'all? First of all, um, it's that time of year, bitch, where oh, my sinuses and my throat and shit just start messing up. Grinding waste water on me. It's just a mess, okay? I just been feeling a little itchy right here. You know, well, it ain't even a sore throat. It's just like, I don't know what it is, but hey, it is what it is. It ain't really bothering me, but I'm just saying it. That's neither here nor there, bitch. Fall is here, okay? That's how I know fall is here because it happens every fucking year. Anyway, so we here for love after lockup, life after lockup, season four, episode 18, um, just a snitch, okay? But, honestly, when is going to be over with? <laughs> Girl, when this season gonna be over with? I, I'm ready for love doing lockup, okay? At least Ty probably gonna give us some crazy shit. Because right about now, um, it's run stale with everybody on this cast right about now, okay? So we get up into the episode. We gonna get the little small stuff out the uh, way. Brittany and Ray, you know, um, I guess time has already moved forward, okay? Because they've already planned the wedding. You know, we saw the little blurb where Brittany was sitting down with her friends and you know, talking about what it is that they're going to do for the bridal party and uh, what they're going to have for the party saviors and the engagement party and, you know, what the um, the, the bridesmaids going to be uh, wearing as they're holding, going down the aisle and all that shit or whatever. Instead of flowers, they're going to have like a little clutch. I said, that's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. You know, it's a little bit different. But then we see Ray, you know, he outside in the garage, um, you know, exercising or whatever. And his mama, his grandma come through, right? His grandma just, she's the sweetest thing ever. And, you know, it feels as though either because of what happened to his mother or he's probably like either the last you know, grandchild, son, or the first grandson, you know, them two, them three situations, that's what it is that, you know, that gets real spoiled. And she takes care of him so much. He respects her. I like the fact that, you know, he was just, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I don't know. Like, because these days, people don't be having respect for our elders, all right? Sometimes these elders be out of control, but most of the time, you just got to have a little bit of respect. I mean, learn how to talk to people, you know? People be like, okay, girl, you curse a lot. Yeah, I do curse a lot, okay? I, I really do in real life, but at the end of the day, if I am in front of an elder person, if I am in front of certain people, I know how to curb my tongue, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a little bit of goddamn respect, and so that's what I like about Ray when he comes to his grandmama. Maybe it's that southern hospitality but then again you get um kevin and goddamn tiffany and uh freaking kayla that's a whole nother thing and a whole nother story meanwhile you know grandma came up there you know because he's getting ready to get married and he uh gets this picture i said now grandma why you do that <laughs> grandma dropped off a picture of ray mama and him and it was um when she was still alive of course um, we heard the story about, you know, she passing away. Unfortunately, she was murdered when she was, when he was 11 years old, shot five times. You know, did he say five times in the head or just five time period? Either way, she's no longer here. And the story is very tragic. And, you know, I am so glad that he do have a motherly figure in his life to take over what his mother could not do and to steer him right. And that means that, you know, I can tell that by the grandmother's disposition and everything that she tried her best to keep him on the right course. And we have to understand that even if a person veers left, veers off course or whatever, that does not mean that they did not have a good home life. That did not mean they didn't have anybody in their household that was teaching them the right way. You can teach a person the right way all you want, and it's just up to them to choose to go to that path okay and so that's what went on and you know i thought he was about to cry because baby you would have did some shit like that to me i would have bust out <laughs> i'm 
Oh, man. Grandma, you had to do that to me. You know, girl, I be looking at TikTok, and I'm telling you, all them videos when they be uh, making portraits of people that's passed away and making it seem like they're back with them or whatever. Bitch, is something on my lip. No, that's just how it is. Okay. So, I, girl, let me tell y'all what happened. Um, the other day, I, I was, girl, I almost had a freaking a uh, panic attack, okay? Because y'all know Miss MP going around here. I don't know. Ain't nobody really talking about it or whatever. And I don't be touching nobody. And I be having my mask on and all that shit. I was a little concerned because, bitch, I had opened up my mouth and it was, um, I said, why is my goddamn, because, bitch, I had bit the inside of my goddamn gum, um, cheek. Okay, I had bit the inside of my cheek while I was asleep. Because sometimes my teeth grind. I said, oh my God. It scared me so bad because I really thought I had something in my mouth. I said, oh my God, what happened? But it's gone now. <laughs> I said, oh Lord. It scared the life out of me, girl. You got to be careful. But anyway, yeah, you know, them little portraits or whatever. I be crying looking at TikTok. Baby, when I be up in my feelings, I go on TikTok and look at sad videos. I really do. <laughs> But anyway, you know, she gets over there just talking, making sure he's okay, making sure he's ready. I know you're ready. You know, when she said, oh, so I see you're working out. Yeah, I got to get in the shape or whatever. She was like, yeah, because I don't want you to, um, you know, you got to pick up your bride. And uh, don't, don't don't nobody want you to struggle with her over uh, crossing over the um threshold or whatever. Now, the way she said that can be taken a couple of different ways. One way is she genuinely mean, bitch, you got to get your strength up because you don't want to embarrass everybody and be a weak nigga walking this girl over this uh, threshold. Or the other could be, you know, you got a big bitch on your hand, okay? She a little thickens, you know? I said, my grandma, which one? Because you know elderly, the elders, they can be shady as hell and they gives no fuck, okay? And y'all know, especially if you black. You you didn't have a shady ass grandma, a shady ass granddaddy come to your life or whatever. You you know what it is. But anyway, so you got that going on and making sure he's okay, talking about the prenup and all of that and you know the blessings and you know she was like I would hope that he gets her a daddy's blessing before she gets married. They get married, but if not, oh well because He's marrying her and not the father. And at this point, that's just all you can do. I understand that this is like a tradition. This is a sign of respect. This is something that goes on and it's been on for, for centuries or whatever, getting blessings and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if it don't happen, it don't, it don't happen. And that's not going to stop me from marrying the person that I want to be with. You know, so, hey, it is what it is. If you can't come off your high horse and see my man or see my woman for who or she is, who he or she is, and... If nothing I do or they do suffices you, that's not my problem and that's not their problem either. So, you know, it was a good little talk or whatever. It irked me or whatever when the grandmama said, you know, how does you feel about somebody that's not uh, all in because of the prenup situation? And I'm like, just because you bring up a prenup does not mean that you're not all, you're all, you're not all in. It just means that they want to protect both you and them, okay? That's just all that it is. They still want to get married. They just want to protect their assets, okay? That's just what it is. Um, and you have to admit, with this restitution, that is a big thing. That is a big thing. Other than that, I feel as though if it had not been for the restitution situation, this wouldn't have been brought up. But um, the prenup really, Brittany wouldn't be pushing for the prenup. I, I, I really truly feel it. I feel like her mama and her daddy probably would have still brought it up, but Brittany wouldn't push for it. And I don't even know if Brittany really pushing for it right now. But um, moving on from that, that was just them. Um, <clears throat> who else is on here? Britney and Ch let me just get the Britneys out the way. Britney and Marcelino, get their asses the fuck off this show, okay? Because when I tell you they drag this whole shit out, they drag this whole shit out. Bitch, how come we still like a couple of days into this goddamn season? It feels like their storyline has literally been over a couple of days. We are on episode 18. I don't know how many episodes we didn't already recorded for this season or this particular half of the season, but baby, it just feels like only like two or three days has went past throughout all these episodes that we didn't talked about. 
All because of what? You feel like Marcelino cheating on you. You won't go home and you see what's going on. You have not spoken to him to get down to the bottom of it. And at this point, it's just like, girl, who gives a shit, okay? If your man cheating, your man cheating, what you gonna do about it? And I just say it like that because, um... At the end of the day, I, it's just really hard for me to feel sorry for uh, Brittany because, girl, you started this whole shit. You've been pushing for a goddamn threesome. I'm going to keep on saying that Brittany's been pushing for a goddamn threesome ever since she got out of jail because she's been trying to make uh, Amanda, her girlfriend, on the side and make uh, Marcelino be okay with it. And Marcelino said, hell no, nah. any other nigga probably would have been cool with seeing a bitch fucking around with another bitch. But, baby, I ain't that type of nigga. And I said, all right, Marcelino, you know, you was giving me some type of tease. I said, oh, I ain't know that you was into that. He said, hell no, nah, I ain't into that shit. Okay, I'm a one-woman man. That's exactly what it is. And I want my woman to be a one-man woman and a one-person uh spouse that's what i want her to be you know what i'm saying and i said all right all right i feel you on that i feel you on that you don't like sharing he said no i don't like sharing but then bitch you just kept on going and going and going and pressuring this motherfucker throughout years and then you get to a point where y'all having issues winning your relationship which is a natural thing because no marriage no relationship no friendship no type of no nothing <clears throat> oh excuse me it's not perfect. There's not going to be a smooth selling all the time. You're going to have your peaks and your valleys. Now you're at a fucking valley right about now. You had your peak when you first came out. You was in your honeymoon stage or whatever. Then you get pregnant. You get married. And then, you know, you're having your peaks and your valley. You're going through a goddamn valley right now. And instead of trying to get up out that valley, the bitch, your goddamn uh, solution to the whole situation was pushing for a threesome again with Amanda. Okay, so Brittany, at the end of the day, this is your fault. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can blame it on Marcelino for, you know, asking for um pussy pics or whatever and, and, and sending dick pics to Amanda and all that stuff. Fan, like you said, it took him, it, 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 it was his choice to do that. You 100% correct. But baby, you put these wheels in motion, okay? And you didn't think about all of the fucking consequences and possibilities of outcomes that could happen. So therefore, I don't feel sorry for you. Y'all, some of y'all were saying that that situation was fake between her and Amanda. No, bitch. She was really fucking Amanda ass up. Because <laughs> them punches was connected, bitch. I had to go back. I watched that scene so many goddamn times. I am so embarrassed and ashamed. Y'all want to know what I was looking at? I went back and I was looking at Married to Medicine. And I don't know if some of y'all who watched this review for Love After Lockup watched Married to Medicine. But, bitch, I went back to season one when Toya and Mariah got into that goddamn fight at the um, party. Now, the whole time y'all was up there talking about quiet ghetto and all this shit. And you two bitches was the ones that fucking start the fight up in the goddamn in front of all the doctors. In front of all the doctors, y'all talking about etiquette and everything, whatever. Doctors, why it's supposed to be this. And, I mean, they was fighting like... Bitch, hood rats, hood rats. And I was just sitting here like, uh, you know, that was a good time. That was a good time. And it just reminded me, I don't know, I was looking at um Brittany and Amanda. I was just like, that was just really funny. But um, Brittany knocked that bitch out and she dragged her on the floor. I said, Amanda, get up, get up. You better scurry away or something. Kick her, kick her. She said, I can't do it. <laughs> And you wouldn't know what, at the end of the day, I feel like Amanda still like her. Bitch, once you put your hands on me, the friendship and whatever relationship we had is over and is done with. I don't know about y'all, but baby, that's a level that I am not finna go through. Okay, once it gets physical, bitch, we over and we done with. Fuck you and your mama and your kids, okay? And I hate to say it like that, it's just fuck everybody. You know, um, because... That's a place of hurt. You hurt me. And then Brittany, Brittany driving out into the desert. This is the last, the last time I came out here. You know, it was right when I got out of jail. <clears throat> And I was out here with Marcelino. It was just real perfect. And it was real peaceful. Okay, and you up here talking about all this shit that's going on in your relationship, bitch. Go over there and fix it, okay? Go over there and fix it. Bitch, let me tell you something. I would have turned my white woman on real quick. I'm sorry, no disrespect to the ones that love me, okay? Listen, y'all know I got y'all. But, bitch, I would have turned them on real quick. And I would have I, I been like, I, if I was Amanda... Call 911 right now because that bitch put her motherfucking hands on me. Call 911. Okay, I would have did that. If I was a man, I would have turned right into it. Bitch, can I tell y'all about the Karen that came to my job? I'll tell y'all that in another video. And when I, I, I posted it on my um TikTok and I also posted it on Twitter. 
baby a fucking mess okay just go to my twitter and you can see it my tiktok name is the same as my twitter name okay and my twitter name is the same as my instagram name ashley shy miller right and shy is s-h-y you know that's in case y'all was trying to keep up with me and some of y'all that don't don't follow me or whatever y'all want to y'all can't anyway that was going on with britney and marcelino baby i'm over them tiffany and kevin they can fucking go to um because y'all already know out of everybody on here i can stomach everybody but tiffany and kevin and um this little kayla bitch it's just it's just not worth it it's not even interesting every time their scene comes on if it wasn't for the fact that i have to review this show i would literally just get up and go to the bathroom or go fix me something to drink because i really don't care tiffany like i said tiffany you do all of this shit getting upset fake upset because you saw some draws fake upset because you saw a number or you know about kayla or whatever and therefore it was more excited when tiffany did what she did to kevin because i was very much here for it and had that what was his name curtis bring curtis back up into the fore right okay even though curtis got his ass beat i ain't even gonna say he got his ass beat he got his ass knocked out because i feel like even though he told him Go ahead, go ahead. What you going to do? What you going to do? He probably didn't really think that he was going to hit him. But then he hit him. But he hit him at an angle that knocked him out for a second. So, therefore, he couldn't retaliate. So, it wasn't really... It was a fair situation because you told him to do it. But we need to have a rematch. We need to have a rematch where everybody's on their equal footing. So that is, okay? But um, this whole situation with them, girl... You get pissed off about the panties. You do all this dramatics with the notes. You go see him. And then people was, you know, it was some people that was really like, well, she was wrong. She should have came in and she should have said something to his mama before she said anything or whatever. No, the fuck she shouldn't have. And to be quite honest, if you want to talk about respect, Kevin should have been the one that introduced her. If we want to say that she should have spoke to the mama first, Kevin should have introduced her to the mother first. Okay. He should have did the introduction. She shouldn't have been the one that had to go over and introduce herself. I'm your woman, so tell her that I'm your woman and all that stuff. But, you know, mama boy, all that shit, she gonna rap for her son and condone everything that he do. She wake up in the bed. Y'all be going to sleep vaping. Y'all wake up vaping, baby. I'm surprised y'all throats ain't got holes in it, okay? I'm surprised it ain't got holes in it. And y'all ain't walking around here like that lady that be on that goddamn commercial that be like, da, 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 da. you know, may she rest in peace, okay? Y'all need to look at her story of what smoking did to her throat and her esophagus and put the vape down in the hookah, bitch, okay? Because you girls down south love hookah. You bitches love hookah, okay? I mean, everybody loves hookah. I just don't get it. I tried, I, I tried a vape pen before, and it just, it just didn't do my throat well. I ain't like the way it, um, it was like a little hookah stick I used to get. I ain't like the way it made my throat feel. It made it feel like I was, um, I was about to, uh, get a lump or something up in there or, uh, like, dry throat or, like, like, my shit was close. I said, uh-uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a hydrochondriac as it is, okay? I'm a little too paranoid for shit like that. Let me stop this. I felt like I was dying. Anyway... Um, they laying up in the bed. I said, damn, bitch. So you just right back up in this bed. She said, yeah, I ain't got nowhere else to go. So I might as well. This is fun. I said, all right. If that's what you want to do, Miss Girl, go on here and do what you got to do. They supposed to be going on a date to meet up with one of these people that they done found on a little dating app that they got together as a couple. Okay. Let me tell you something. Then I used to be on a dating app, right? And it used to bother me so bad. When these motherfuckers used to hit me up, and it literally says lesbian, okay? That's what I want. I don't want no motherfucking couples, bitch. Unless you two women's, bitch, I don't want to fuck your man. I don't want your man to fuck me, okay? Like, please, let that go, okay? And I used to be so mad when I seen shit like that. It used to bother me. Um. Anyway, you know, so they go meet up with this girl named Tracy. Bitch, as soon as I seen Tracy, I said, is she, she gives me like she a little bit of biracial or whatever. You know, she probably called herself Mix. <laughs> Not that that's a problem, but you know, that's how the girls do it these days. That's how everybody do it these days. They can't say, you know, people don't, you know, people progress and I guess. They like, bitch, I'm not white. I'm not black. I'm mixed. All right. You a mixed race person. Okay. In my eyes, you black, but all right, all right, you a little white, all right, all right, you know, you a little passing, all right, but you a little mixed. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. We established that. 
And as soon as I seen it, I said, this girl ain't fit for them. Now, I don't even like them like that. And I'm just like, girl, you you can just exit off the door. Okay? They going through the whole motions of, you know, we going to put this tab right here, put the X right here if I want to to move on. Or we going to put it this this right here saying that we can keep her. I said, what? All of this shit, sir? Girl, why they go talking to this lady? Kayla then found out where they was and was stalking them. Sent the picture to him. Kayla, you doing all this talking. Oh, she, he with her bitch ass, okay? You know, why he ain't never asked me for no threesome? I would have fucked the bitch with her and with him and I would have kicked her ass out right after. What she needs to understand is that I would always be number one. Okay, you number one, but yet you being treated like the fucking sad bitch. So good for being number one. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, you have no respect for yourself. And it's not even funny anymore. It is actually pathetic. Because first of all, it's just given that, you know, a young girl falls in love with an older person and she just can't let go. And I just don't understand what you see up in Kevin's little ass. I really don't get you somebody like his friend. The one with the cute eyes and the um tattoos or whatever. He a little man, okay? He is a thick man, too. He look like he got to pick you up and throw you and go ahead and catch you before you fall and finish doing what he got to do, bitch. Like, come on. He look like he can really put that thunder down. You know what I'm saying? He way better looking than um goddamn Kevin. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, and he tried to get on the phone with her to see what was up. She was acting like she ain't gonna go over there and um break their shit up. I said, Kayla, you talk a lot of shit. I just don't like people who talk so much shit but don't really put the shit into uh action. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm gonna you doing all of that stuff, baby, go on over there and break that shit up. Hey, ain't no talking. Y'all doing too much goddamn talking, bitch. Just like I be doing on here. This man be calling you bitches and shit, and you just be kidding. Yeah, no, it just ain't going to happen. They wind up leaving because, you know, he ain't even feeling Tracy. And, you know, come to find out, Tiffany wasn't really feeling her either, okay? That ain't the vibe that they going with. Bush, 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 bosh. Good. Moving on from that, um, we got Amber and Puppy. So, instead of Amber, um, well, Puppy going home because, you know, the whole situation with Eric... This is how I feel about that situation with Eric and that whole, you know, driving up to see him and all that stuff. It should never happen, okay? It should never happen because at the end of the day, I know friends, especially really good friends, best friends, we're going to tell our friends what's going on, right? And it's sometimes it's for protection just in case something goes on so that we can have or oral history that, you know, I done told somebody that this is what's happening, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. But then, don't tell me no shit if you don't want me doing nothing about it or whatever. And have it come to your defense and coming to your aid when you just going to get back with that person. But that's what everybody does. Just about everybody does. We talk shit about our, our situation with our friend, you know. But then, knowing damn well, we're going to still be trying to work it out with our boo. That's what happens. So, we got to put that in there. But given this situation and given how we done seen Eric be acting, I, if we can see it, I'm pretty sure they see way more because they're actually living in it. So why the fuck would you go following this man? This man is crazy. I, I, you know, he just gives me that tease. And I'm not saying that he's physically putting his hands on the girl. I'm just saying it's literally some most, it, it has, it's, it's, it's giving verbal and at least emotional abuse that's going on. Okay. Like, come on. That lady was just really scared up in the car. Oh my God. I can't believe we did that. I can't believe that she convinced me to do this. <laughs> I just don't. And to the point where you didn't even want to go home and she want to use the excuse of she didn't want to go home because she knew Eric wasn't going to be there. Child, please. If Eric wasn't going to be there, then y'all should have just stayed at the crib. But no, they go over there to Amber house and, um, you know, Queen is over there sitting on the couch i said queen you just chilling she said girl yeah you know i ain't got no issues i'm just listening to these fools i said i understand you know but queen queen just like she just put it out there that motherfucker still fucking around with his wife and he ain't a ring don't mean shit okay a ring do not mean shit because of course they told her what happened and it was like he keep going off and then they said something about wife and kids. So he already got kids with the wife too. Girl, if that's the case, then that's probably why he don't want to get a divorce because he don't want to be put on child support 
um, or he don't want to pay that spousal support, or he don't want to pay alimony. One of those three support sis, bitch. He don't want to pay that shit, and he probably still giving her dick on the side as well, okay? And they was like, girl, none of his hands, bitch. You the side bitch at this point. It's always been a wife. It's still going to be the wife, and you just second to none. That's just what it is. You just coming in second, okay? And you just got to wait your turn. Then when they dropped the whole thing about her being pregnant, it was just like, what you going to do about it? You going to keep it or you going to get rid of it? What's the laws out there in Georgia? I said, who gives a fuck what the laws is? You better find a state that says abort, bitch. And I hate to say it like that, abort mission, okay? Because you don't need to be up in this toxic-ass relationship. It is one thing to be in a toxic relationship, and it is another thing to bring a child into a toxic relationship. I, I be scared when I see shit like that. I really do. I really do. And you want to know what's real sad because, and I keep on bringing up TikTok because TikTok be showing you a whole bunch of shit. I never thought I'd be on TikTok as much as I'd be on TikTok, but it's so much videos, so many videos of domestic abuse that be going on. People literally making viral videos to make sure, and, and, and you can tell which ones are real and which ones aren't. And... Stuff be happening in real time and they be uploading it or they be going on live just so they can have proof that shit is happening in, in this fucked up relationship. And a lot of them have kids crying in the background. It is so crazy. I'm just like, puppy, come on now. She finally gone home, girl. She go home and he was like, so why you ain't come home? Because I ain't want to be here because you ain't going to be here. So what's the problem? You know, at this point, they get into it a little bit. And the way that he speaks is as if, you know, he's trying to manipulate or he really don't care. And then, um, you know, at one point, I forget what she said. Like, are you still seeing your wife or whatever? Are you still seeing your wife? I, I, you ain't got to ask me nothing about that. I can't tell you nothing about that because it's legal and all this stuff. And ain't nothing else to tell me. Oh, so you over there with Amber. Okay, so why you over there with Amber? You're like, because that's my friend. Why you be telling her all our business or whatever? Okay, then what, what, what you need to do that? You know what? I'm finna go. I'm finna go. I said, what? So now you finna leave again? And this, and let me tell you something. You in a relationship with me and we staying together. Girl, this walking out the house and just leaving when you want to, it just ain't gonna work. I need some update. Like, bitch, what if something happened to you and I don't even know where the fuck you at? Okay? Like, come on. Don't do that. Or what if something happened to me and I can't get in contact with you? That is my pet peeve and my main pet peeve in a relationship. Lack of communication. Not on Dante's, Deontay level. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to be talking throughout the, you know, like, every fucking five minutes. But, bitch, if I text you and say, what's up? You good? You know, simple. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to leave you alone for the rest of the day or for most of the day. Then probably when I get home, I'm going to text you, hit you up or whatever. Or I'm going to let you do that. But we have to have some type of level of constant communication. I don't want to go days without talking to you. And I mean, when I say talking to you or whatever, just knowing that you're alive, okay? You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to talk on the phone for hours at a time each time, okay? Bitch, it could be a couple of minutes, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. You know, people got shit to do. You know, you can't be all in, oh, in soon with the fucking person that you with. That's, that's, that's neither here nor there. I almost put some business out there, but, you know, anyway, I was just like, girl, she was like, you can't go. He was like, why not, bitch? <laughs> She said, because I'm pregnant. And he was like, she's like, and if that's what you want to do, and you want to just go ahead and leave, you can go ahead and leave. He walked out that damn door and closed it. Puppy went up in that room and cried. I said, bitch, what? That lady told you he was, he was like, no, you're not. No, you're not. And I, I kind of understand why he probably would have thought that she was lying or whatever just to keep him there and all that shit. You know, people do that. But she was dead ass telling the truth. But he did come right back up in the house. You know, I guess it was one of those things like, damn, what the fuck? Got to hit me. I just wasn't expecting that. So he go up in the room and was like, so, um, you sure about that? Like, 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 you, you, I, you, you, yeah. He started like that little boy on that uh clip. He was like, have you ever, do you, you ever, you want, do you, do you? And, and y'all you, know what I'm talking about, right? I was just like, Eric, get your words together. You sounded like me a little bit. Get your words together, okay? He said, listen, I got to process it, okay? Listen, she didn't drop the bomb on me. I just wasn't ready for that. Listen, girl, are you really pregnant? How do you know? I was in the drugstore. We went to the gas station, me and Amber, and, you know, I was telling her I was feeling nauseous, and I was, um, you know, I haven't had my period, and I was a little bit late, so she told me to go ahead and take a drug test, a, a, a pregnancy test or whatever. Bitch, you need to take a drug test, too, because, girl... I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Anyway, 
And it was like, oh, so what you, so, 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 uh, what, 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 I said, what? Get your words, calm down. He said, so what we gonna do from here? I'm like, I don't know. I said, see, now this is some, and I know a lot of pregnancies aren't planned, but y'all don't need a baby. Y'all do not need a baby. I'm sorry. Y'all don't need a baby. And I am so tired of looking at that girl going to that bathroom holding her stomach. I said, it's a little pudge. We get it, girl. We get it. All right. But then you six weeks. That's probably just a little bloat. That's just a little bloat, bitch. But anyway, moving on from that, Lindsay and Deontay. Um, they're not going to last. They're not going to last because Deontay got an issue with Blaine. Blaine got an issue with Deontay. And they just don't realize that they both got real issues with each other over this bitch who just might not be out in the free world that long. They Blaine and um Lindsay, I get it that you stay in his house and all that stuff. And that's your good homeboy or whatever. But baby, you can't tell me that you don't know that that man got something going for you. Okay? And you can't... I don't know if I truly believe that they ain't even hit it before. I just I, I I just don't get that feeling that they never tried it. You you the way I mean I get how people are when they like somebody or whatever. You know you would do anything for them or whatever, and that don't necessarily mean that y'all had any intimate contact and all that stuff. You just real friendly, but they just gives me the feeling that they didn't already smushed. Okay, at least kiss the swap spit in the mouth or whatever. You know it's been a long time since I did some shit like that. Um. And it's cuffing season right now. Y'all, it's spooky season. It's spooky season. Anyway, uh, that's the best season. I don't give a damn. Fuck Christmas. Y'all love Christmas and y'all lights. I say the Christmas lights be cute or whatever. Oh, my God. The Christmas lights be cute or whatever. But, you know, it's spooky season for me. Because I get to look at all my horror movies, you know. They get my candy corn. Girl, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Okay. What was I talking about? <laughs> Lindsay and Blaine. He, he chauffeuring her everywhere. And you can tell, like, he just doing any and everything for her. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, I really hope you get something out of this since you just playing. Like, you just waiting on her hand and foot. Taking her to the lawyer. Okay. So that she can figure out what it is that she going to do. Mama got arrested for the Scott situation because Scott had her ass arrested. On the one hand, he a bitch for that. But on the other hand, he really not. Because, bitch, you come in my shit and you fuck my shit up. It was either I fuck you up or I take your ass to jail. Which one is it? So, he chose the right route, which would lock her ass up. So, I mean, I guess that's just what it is. But then you get to this whole situation where, you know, she got caught again with some guns and drugs on her. So, that's what she go to jail for as well. So, now she got some warrants out for her ass. And then, basically, the lawyer. Now, let's get into this lawyer get up. Okay, since we want to talk about... About respectability pot, uh, products and uh, politics and all this shit. Um, y'all, you know they got this little crown act or whatever. It's 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 a thing. Like we have to literally get put up in law that it is okay for us black folks, of ethnic folks, to have braids and locks and afros and whatever with our hair, have our hair in our natural state when it's okay for a nigga that sat down that looked like that man as the lawyer he looked like he a fake ass lawyer he could be real legit but he just gives me i probably passed the bar on my hundredth time i do this on the on the side as a play play gig you know with his ponytail his ponytail was so damn disheveled it should be a freaking um we should have some rules and guidelines of what we can and cannot accept Cut that shit, okay? Cause it looked messy. It looked like he finna go drink some beer right off the um, right afterwards, and he finna go surf or some shit. He just really looked like he was in his hippie era. But he told that girl, either turn yourself in or don't go outside and get your ass caught. Cause once they catch your ass, they gonna catch your ass. You gonna take your ass right back to jail. And then you blame you talk about some, you know how you told Deontay, yeah, you know I told him you. Well, how would you feel if somebody told you that that girl was about to go to jail and you know got a warning all? 
all this stuff. And speaking of, Deontay wind up calling her. She gets on the phone with him. He was like, yeah, I'm finna come down there for your birthday this weekend. She was like, come on, bring that ass, bring that dick, okay, because I'm ready, you know. And, and then they get to talking about the whole situation where she got a job. And he was like, yeah, you got a job, you got a job, boo, what you doing? She said, yeah, I got a job with Blaine. I mean, it's working with Blaine or whatever. And he was like, oh, you got a job with Blaine, huh? I don't feel comfortable with you working with that motherfucker, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. That annoyed her. Then the, the, the conversation went from being happy to being, you know, both of them getting their feelings about the whole warrants and all that shit. And then she was about to hang up and he was like, damn, you, you why, why, why you doing it, saying it like that? I mean, like, damn, damn, I'll tell you what the fuck you want. I just want to tell you that, you know, I'll see you later and I love you. Okay, I love you. Now, honestly... Even though Blaine is doing this from a hater's fucking perspective because he won't Lindsay for himself, that shit, I probably would have had the same reaction. No, I know I would have had the same reaction. Like, Lindsay, that, you, you, you're not fit for this man, okay? She said, listen, this motherfucker is smothering me. How can you be smothered long distance, okay? Like, what is going on? Meanwhile, Deontay over there talking like, man, she used to call me all the goddamn time. I said, well, she was in jail. She ain't had nothing else to do but to call you, okay? Drawing diagrams of your house and, and, and all that stuff and your street and your route or whatever. She was drawing GPS. I said, oh, Lindsay, you was bored as hell up in that damn jail, huh? You was really love struck. Wouldn't have been me, bitch. I ain't got time for that. Even if I was like the girl, I got all the time in the world, but I ain't got time for you, bitch. But, um, no, I was just like, this is not going to work because Lindsay is annoying. She was like, ever since I saw him, I said, girl, you put that shit on him. You put that shit on him. It's been a minute since he's going to have some. And now he don't know how to act. He acting like Chaz a little bit, bitch, okay? The only thing is you reciprocating. That's all that is, you know? Meanwhile, while he over there getting dressed or whatever, Derek comes over. I said, look at my nigga Derek. Long time no see. And leave it to Derek and Mama Aunt Deontay to give it to you real. Why are you fucking with this bitch? I don't understand why you keep going from prison inmate to prison inmate to prison inmate, okay? You up in a relationship with this woman and she ain't talked to you in days. Y'all go days at a time without talking and y'all long distance and all that shit. Fuck that. You know what you thinking. What you thinking going on? You don't know if it's some um other shit that she probably doing fucking somebody else. That's basically what Derek said. I said, you know what? Yes, Derek. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, and you... It, for my people that watch Queen Sugar, if you watch Queen Sugar, <clears throat> oh, I'm starting my words. If you watch Queen Sugar and you see the act, okay, let me turn it off. Somebody going to be like, oh my God, my ear, Ashley, what the fuck? Calm down. Calm down. It was accident. I put it on silent. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting that. Um, <clears throat> you know how y'all be so sensitive. I be like, God damn. And y'all know I still fuck with y'all, so I don't even worry about it. Anyway, uh, y'all are cussing y'all, and I still be saying it like that. All right, and... <laughs> y'all look at Queen Sugar. Y'all know the actor that plays Micah. Look at him, and then look at Deontay. Tell me they don't similar. They look a little similar. Okay, like the hair shape a little bit. He just looked like a dark skin version of him. That's it. I was looking at it and I was like, that's what it is. Okay, but hey, it is what it is. Because Deontay is not a bad looking guy. He just do slow shit. Okay, he just do stupid shit. And everybody is calling him out. You have all the fucking red flags right there. Red flag number one is fucking around with a prison inmate after another prison inmate then fucked up, fuck you over. It's not bad that you went after a prison inmate or whatever. That's not the bad. You know, they deserve love too or whatever, depending on what they did. But, um, <clears throat> you know, you got to stop. You got to stop, okay? You doing the same shit over and over again, expecting a different result. That is the pure definition of insanity, baby. Stop that shit and move on to somebody else in the real world, okay? Even though you can get played in the real world, too. But at least, never mind. Never mind. Uh, Sarah and um Sean and Destiny... Destiny had a little false alarm. She was having, I'm going to assume that she was probably having like some Braxton Hicks 
uh, contractions or whatever. You know, she felt some type of way about her little husband, Jason, coming there, being at the hospital before she was at the hospital. You know, him stepping up and everything. They kind of surprised her that, you know, he was really there for her like that and all that shit. And I'm like, this man really wants to be with you. And yeah, you up here trying to fuck around and destroy Sean for what? Granted... It makes me mad because it just didn't make sense and you make me defend Sean on that end. And I just don't want to defend Sean. But Destiny's still pregnant. That's just all that it is. Bitch, take your ass home and go lay down, okay? Because you put an un needed stress on your damn baby that's what it is like you said you have to think that it ain't about you no more because it's never was to be honest moving on from that at this wedding right <clears throat> i wanted to fight goddamn uh sarah mama because listen now usually i'm with her when it comes to shine like i don't want that nigga up in my goddamn family okay understandable i get it girl but they have the wedding. They're at the reception. You know, everybody's cool. Everybody's okay. They have the first dance. Next thing you know, they do cutting the cake. And they was like, this is also going to be a gender reveal. And then when they cut the cake, the cake shows that, oh, we're going to have a baby girl. Woo! Okay, cool. You know, next thing you know, probably a few minutes later, we see Kelly coming over there. Now, Kelly just looked... Like a mama bear being pissed trying to protect her cub. That's what I got from it. But did y'all hear that shit? Did she say something about, um, how come it couldn't have been her? Or I ain't never getting nothing like this. I said, no, no, don't do that shit, Kelly. Because everybody, people was already thinking that you was a little bitter. Don't, don't, don't fucking say no shit like that. Because, man, you finna prove the motherfuckers right. Okay? I said, girl, you want to be fucking around with Sean? You dodged a goddamn bullet. And that's what Sarah want to keep on throwing up there. I mean, you didn't be, been with him. You never got engaged. You never got married. You had six kids and all that stuff. Okay, so what's your problem? I said, Sarah, you keep throwing that shit out there like Sean is really a goddamn prize. Sean is one of the most fucked up human beings on this earth right about now. And you still stupidly got married to him, okay? Because what I cannot understand and I cannot get with is a person who will lie to me about their age. That's one. And sometimes, depending on what the situation is and how big the gap is that you lied about it, I let that shit slide. You say you really 40 years old and you trying to say that you 36. Okay, that's all right, all right. Maybe 38. That's okay. Two years off, that's fine or whatever. You know, people do that. But this motherfucker said he was 35 or 36 or whatever, and he really 45. Bitch, he, he took damn near 10 years off of his age, okay? He lied about how many kids he had to Destiny or to him to, uh, to uh, Sarah, too. You can't even put that out there for real, you know? You won't even tell your um soon-to-be wife slash baby mama or your wife at this point, you know, that your ex-girlfriend is stalking your ass and she's out of jail. You couldn't even tell your soon-to-be wife at the time that your uh, ex, your baby mama, is going to be there. And she's not there to fucking fuck around with you, but because of your daughter that's going to be there for comfort or whatever. Because that's the only way that she was going to be able to come out there because she wanted her mama with her. Understandable. So, this is a compromise of a such. You can't say the fucking truth about what's going on, right? You know, and I hope you're sitting here looking at the fact that the damn nigga is a goddamn fucking deadbeat, okay? He's a deadbeat. He is a deadbeat daddy. And it's not coming from my mouth. It's coming from his kid's mouth. You start a conversation that Gracie had. Meanwhile, Gracie freaked the fuck out because she was just like, you know, this is fucked up. Now I already feel like you having this child and you getting this whole new family to replace us. But not only that, bitch, you finna have another daughter and we ain't even really got a good relationship. And so that means you finna give all your attention to this new little girl. Okay. On the one hand, I understand where Gracie is coming from. I understand the freak out or whatever, because this is literally the first time that she met this new girl. This new lady that is now her stepmama and the first time in a long time that she probably done met her dad. And they ain't really had no real conversation, conversation that they need to be had. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm seeing you get married before we can figure out our issues. It's fucked up. The whole situation is fucked up. And the girl, you can tell that she's really sensitive about certain things. And if that, and I'm putting myself in that position because ain't no way in hell. Let me tell you something. This is where Sean fucked up at. Again, he fucked up because... Why in the hell 
would you want your kids to come and, and, and see you get married to somebody that you never really introduced them to? You should have introduced those kids or got onto a certain page with Kelly or whatever and introduced those kids to Sarah before you ask them to come to your wedding to support you. They don't want to support you and a stranger that they don't fucking know. They never saw this woman. You should have been made the fucking introduction. Okay? And even if Sarah, uh, um, Kelly said no, whatever, you could have FaceTime and all that shit. An introduction should have been made because the way Gracie is acting, she ain't never met this bitch. And then you got, you know, her mama having all this lip or whatever, trying to blame Kelly for what's going on. No, the girl is freaking out and it's not Kelly. Kelly is trying to smooth the situation over, even though it kind of really didn't look like it because she was hiding because her feelings, you know, her baby's feelings is hurt. So therefore she's going into mother's protective mode. So of course it's going to come off like she's doing the most, but I get it. And even Sarah said to her mama, it's not Kelly. It's not Kelly. Now see, Sarah, this is the issue that I have with you. You know that it's not Kelly. Kelly ain't up here trying to stop nothing. Sean can go out there. And at the end of the day, what you need to understand is Sean got a lot of kids. He has to be a daddy to them damn kids, okay? Why well, I say daddy like that? He got to be a father to them kids. He has time to fucking make up, okay? Now, if you didn't want to share your husband with this, uh, all these people, these kids, whatever, you shouldn't have got with somebody that had a whole bunch of kids, okay? That's one. For two, I don't understand how you acting one way at the fucking situation right then and there, and you're telling your mama that it's not Kelly, it's the daughter, she needs to calm down, let him talk to the daughter and all that stuff. That's what it is. And then, and the mom talking about some, I'll beat her ass or I'll slap her ass. No, bitch, I'll slap you. And I don't care if she was talking to Kelly or she was talking to Gracie because it could have been either or. At the end of the day, it was not needed. Take your drunk ass back up in there. Hillbilly looking ass back up in there, okay? That's what you need to do because that was not needed. They heightened that situation up. All they needed to do was... For them, and honestly, we can, Kelly, I can get on you too. Granted, you was being a mama bear or whatever, but you ain't have to come in there so hot and heavy like that. You did kind of come hot and heavy when you went over there to shine, and you was pissed. I get it, but maybe if your approach was a little bit softer or whatever, and it would have just been like, hey, 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 um, can I talk to you for a second? You know, um, Gracie is a little pissed off, you know. She saw the whole gender reveal and it just kind of stirred up some emotions and all that stuff. No, we couldn't go there. Your daughter is over there pissed off. So then, you know, of course, that just kind of spiraled everything out. I take everything else back. That kind of spiraled everything out. But at the end of the day, still, Sarah knew that it wasn't Kelly's fault. Or, or anything was really going on. Your mama come up in there and she acting a pure ass and all that shit. And I'm just like, let Sean and his daughter talk. Because y'all did this shit fucking wrong. Y'all did this shit wrong, all right? Damn, it just pissed me off. And I was just like, and then Sarah, you talking in the confessional or with your friends. Oh, they better be glad I'm not I'm pregnant because if I wasn't, bitch, I'd turn up. You weren't going to do shit. You had all that lip and stuff to say about goddamn Kelly, but when you actually saw Kelly, oh, it was a whole different tone. You're not going to do shit, so shut the fuck up, okay? Pregnant or goddamn not. Sean, this is all your fucking fault. This is all your fucking fault. If my father, who I have not seen in... Bitch, I was at work today, and um, one of my um co-workers or whatever that work in another branch but my father used to work at you know he has now retired and i just remembered that because she just remember uh told me uh reminded me she was like so how your daddy um enjoying uh retirement and how your grandma is she okay she's still sick or whatever here's me um I don't really talk to him like that. Well, I don't, uh, actually, I just don't talk to him. So I don't associate with that side of my family like this. So, I, and, and honestly, I probably shouldn't have said that because I feel like she probably going to take it over there and be like, well, they don't talk and all that shit. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. But, uh, you know, if, if motherfucker that I ain't spoken to in a long time and then all of a sudden you want to tell me that you're getting married and you want me to show up, bitch, it's going to be a no. It's going to be a no for me, okay? And then you're talking about something. You got a baby on the way. It's going to be a no. I'm going to feel some type of goddamn way. Um, and if I do show up, I'm wrecking shop. I'm putting you on blast because my emotions going to come out once I see you and I see the bitch that you with. And I'm like, oh, so you can play mommy and dad. You can play daddy to her kids because he did that to us before. He, Oh, my God. He did that shit to me before. Oh, my God. Girl, I'm unlocking memories. I'm unlocking fucking memories. 
one of his girlfriends that he got, bitch, we barely heard anything from this motherfucker. And we found out he had a girlfriend and the girlfriend had some kids. And he was buying all this shit for the kids. And he was playing daddy to the kids. I said, oh my God, so you could do all this shit for them? But bitch, you can't even do it for your biological fucking kids? Oh, that's what shit really fucking turned. That's what shit really fucking turned. Anyway, let me get up off of this because, bitch... <sighs> I told y'all, a, a memory, Sean just fucking, ooh, that's why I can never be on his goddamn side for shit. And it's fuck Sarah too, bitch. You know, Kelly, calm the fuck down. Anyway, moving on from there, let's just get to this ending. Because I've been on here talking too goddamn much. Um, Goddamn Chaz. <laughs> Motherfuck. Chaz and Brown went, <clears throat> baby, a hot ass mess. So Chaz is at the apartment. hotel or whatever you want to call it he gets a text message he was like you know things kind of changed or whatever it just feels like you know brown was not really into it the way that she was or at least i thought i said she was never really into it it was a con game okay girl he get a text message right <laughs> it was like she's not answering her phone or whatever i said the bitch is busy allegedly and she gets the text message and it's all blurred out. I said, bitch, I want to read it. And he said, no worries. I will read it out loud to you. I said, oh, okay. He was like, hey, um, I'm one of uh, Brownwin's friends. And I just want to let you know that she is back to doing the same things that she used to do prior to her being in jail. Um, he was like, who is this and what are you talking about? She's back to escorting and my name is Tawny. Okay. Um, I'm one of her friends or whatever. And look at this site. Now, see, I just looked, got, got through doing this, um, malware site, you know, cyber attack type of situation course at work. And I was like, you just going to, uh, open up a link from a random number that you don't know. Okay. And he said, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the risk. Bitch, he opened up that goddamn link and he looked at the escort and ass profile. Bitch, Brown ass was all up on there. I said, oh, bitch, you ain't want to touch your husband, but you will sell that cat for anything, bitch. $140 for 30 minutes, $270 for an hour, you know, erotic massages and dances and shit. Bitch, naked cuddles, girl, you better shut the fuck up. All right. I don't want him to see my body. I mean, God, it's just like. <clears throat> oh, my throat hurt a little bit. Hold on. It's just like, you know, I used to be a certain way, but, you know, it's just, I gained a little weight since the last time, and I don't, I don't know, like, it's just real hard, and, you know, like, I never had sex sober. No, you just didn't want to fuck him. That's just all it is. And now that you gave him some, she like, you know, he's just a little bit more needier, okay? She had the goddamn, you know, he was like, first of all, this supposed to be old, but then I'm looking at it. She didn't update this shit recently, a few days ago. I said, God damn, Bronwyn, what you doing, bitch? Girl, she said, I got to do what I got to fucking do because this man ain't cutting it. I said, all right, just be honest and let that man go. Cut him loose, okay? Girl, she at the coffee shop or whatever, and she giving us the lowdown on her dude that calls her. She was like, <laughs> so, the guy that caught me earlier, his name is Yola. And, you know, it's just like... He was my boyfriend before he went back to jail. And he kind of left me because he, you know, we didn't break out because, you know, he cheated on me with some other bitch. And then he went back to jail for like two years for a parole violation. And I was just like, oh my God. You know, every time I see him, I just get like these butterflies in my stomach. And when I heard the phone ring and I heard his voice, it was just, I couldn't breathe. And oh my God, <laughs> Yola. <laughs> motherfucker gonna come through the coffee shop though bitch no it was her friend right and so she sit down and she talking to her about everything that's going on and she was like so what you gonna do i don't even know it's like <laughs> and then chaz like he want to stay down here and he's just like being so annoying and so needy and it's just like oh my god i said girl first of fucking all 
what are you on? And I hate to fucking say that, but bitch, every time we see brother, she's on something. You can't tell me. Now, let me not put that out there because you know motherfuckers getting sued or whatever. Allegedly, it look like it. It look like it. It don't look like you're sober, baby. It don't look like you're sober. And that is not drunk talk. Okay? That is perks or some shit or whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's something. Oh, my God. <laughs> I said, let Chaz go. Baby, Chaz came up in there. And he had them flowers. But the friend had told her about Tawny texting Chaz. And then they flipped that shit around and said, Oh my God, so Chaz is up here looking at stuff and he's doing stuff. Why would he do this? Oh my God. Like, Tawny is Courtney's ex-girlfriend. She felt like I fucked around with Courtney. And I really didn't do anything with him. But for Chaz to be participating in this, she's just a snitch. That's just all that it is. And then he's going behind my back and he's looking up stuff and whatever. I said, oh, hold up. Tawny came to him. So, of course, he's going to inquire. So, why are you pissed off at him as if he's the one that initiated this shit? But I would say this. Chaz, you kind of fucked it up when you was up there trying to get her password and all this shit to her accounts and stuff. That was a little much. That was a little much, okay? But when he came up in there with them five, she was like, you talking to Tiny? Huh? I didn't get those from Tiny. I said, what? The look on Chaz's face was like, I said, oh, yeah, Chaz. Oh. The bell has been lifted, bitch. You didn't saw it. And, and, and it made me so mad with Chaz because once he found out about the website, he was like, you know, ever since, you know, um, Chaz, uh, uh, me and Brown would be together, she's been up front with me. You know what I'm saying? She's been telling me the truth. At least I feel like she has, you know. And I don't know what this is. I don't feel like this is her. You know, maybe it's a friend that's, um, you know, doing this or whatever or somebody trying to get revenge on her and trying to, you know, make it seem like she's... I said... You making up every excuse in the book instead of just seeing what's right before your fucking eyes. You ain't even got to go that far. It ain't even no goddamn reach. It's right there. It's right there. She did the shit. I said, boy, Chaz, you just won't learn. But that's luck. Mm. Love after lockup. Boy, I hit it right. Love after lockup. Life after lockup. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all later. One day, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to do a review that's probably going to be like 30 minutes or less of this episode. But then I'm going to be like, did, if I do that, that means that the episode really wasn't shit. It really wasn't shit. But, um, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe.